So a lot of you guys have been asking and wondering about the brand new Sony Bernardo. Burrito? Bernano? The, the Bruno? Uh, we don't talk about Bruno. Today's video is going to be about the brand new Sony Burano. Now this is a new addition to the brand new Cine Alta line and I don't have $25,000 to spend on this camera. I just got the Komodo X, but some people want to know my take on it. So here it is. We'll get there. Now, starting off with the body design, it kind of follows a FX line of camera following that gray sort of fashion. Now, from what I did here, it's actually not made out of the same metal as a Sony Venice, which makes a lot of sense because it's a lot cheaper, which we'll talk about a bit later. But it does add a couple of things that I think are gonna be really useful. For one, you're gonna have dual card slots and they're gonna be CF Express type B cards. Now, this is actually really great because one of the comments I had on the Sony Venice was the memory was incredibly expensive and most people don't wanna get the AXSM cards. And if they they had a choice they probably wouldn't get a car that's going to be three thousand dollars just to be able to store a little bit of footage on it you are also going to get two different mounts with this camera now you can use the native sony e-mount which i hope you can use because it's a sony camera but you also have the ability to have a locking pl mount at the same time so whenever you have to choose between the two mounts you could just put on or remove whatever mount you're not using in order for you to use a variety of different lenses nowadays i feel like i'm using a lot more pl mounted lenses and then i just use sony e-mount stuff when i do need that autofocus which which is another thing that's on this camera that we'll talk about later, but it's really cool that a camera of this stature now has autofocus and you could use E-mount and PL lenses too. Now with the Sony Burano size, you also don't have to get that external recorder that goes on the back of the camera like the Sony Venice or the Venice 2, which is super nice because it takes away a little bit of that weight and makes it a little bit smaller for its form factor. Also, you can record raw LT on the CF Express Type B cards, which makes it really nice and you don't have to have a bunch of accessories just to get the camera to work the best that it can. Now with new and expensive cameras, everybody wants to know what kind of resolution you can get on it, what kind of quality and what kind of frame rates you can get. Now the Sony Burano does have the ability to record in a K full frame it at the 30 frames a second which actually is insane now a lot of people don't really care about 8k because it's a little bit excessive but you can crop down on the sensor if you want to get 6k or you need more and different shooting modes now not everybody is a fan of cropping in on their sensor but after using the red komodo x for a little while that is a super 35 sensor it's not that big of a deal you'll be able to live you might have to do some math in terms of adjusting the frame but realistically it's not that big of a deal you're also going to get the OCN LT. Now, this is something that might be a little bit new to some people getting into the system, but from using the Sony Venice, every single shoot that I shot on it when I was testing out this camera and doing a review, I shot at OCN LT, which is more than enough quality for a lot of users that are gonna be on the system. It feels kind of like the marketing is geared towards more high-end documentaries and high-end commercials where you might not have to use the middle-of-the-road codec or even the high-Q codec that's gonna be on there on the Venice and the Venice 2. So if you are somebody that still wants that raw workflow you're going to get the lt which is a bit softer on your memory space especially with the cards you're going to be using but at the same time you're going to be able to get all the 16 stops of dynamic range the great color that comes out of it you're still able to do that albeit you just don't get the other higher quality modes which makes sense because of the price now there is something that might get on people's nerves and that the sony burano doesn't actually have open gate which for a lot of people that's really important for shooting an anamorphic however i've been shooting on sensors that aren't open gate and i've been just fine of course you're going to lose a little bit of resolution. However, you are going to be shooting at 8K or 6K if you want to, so you're gonna have a lot more pixels to deal with, but unfortunately, yes, you're not gonna get an open gate sensor. Now, what is nice and kind of unsurprising on the Sony Burano is that you're still gonna get a dual base ISO. You're gonna have 800, which is pretty much standard for a lot of the cinema cameras Sony has, and then you're also going to get 3200. Now, before everybody freaks out and they say it doesn't have 12,800, to be honest, most people probably didn't need it to be 12,800 to begin with, with. And at 3200, it's a great medium, but at the same time, if you're someone that's using something like a Sony Burano, which is a $25,000 camera, you probably have some control over your lighting, or even less than that, you know how to deal with low light situations, making 3200 just fine for the vast majority of people. And if you need something at 12,800, Sony already makes three different cameras that can do that. So I wouldn't consider that a loss in terms of the dual base ISO on the Sony Burano side of things. Now, like most Sony cinema cameras, they have ND filters as well. It actually borrows the same automatic ND that's gonna be on the Sony FX6 and the Sony FX9. Now, there is only one caveat, and it kind of got on my nerves on the other cameras, and it doesn't seem like they changed it on the Burano. Now, when you turn on the built-in NDs that are on this camera, it automatically jumps up to a spot that's a little bit too dark for my liking on the low end. And when you wanna go up in terms of your ND, you're only gonna get about seven stops of ND using the Sony Burano like the Sony FX6. Six, which honestly for me seven stops is more than enough but for some people 
that need a bit more like nine or 10, you're gonna have the same issues that you might have on some of the other cameras. But for the vast majority of people, the range that the ND filter actually gives you is going to be enough. I, I just wish that once you turned it on, it was a little bit less so I could go up to it. But again, if you wanna put an automatic ND that's also built into the camera, something that other cameras in this price range don't get, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices. Okay, outfit change because I spilt on myself and it's way too hot for a sweater. Now, one thing that I wanna talk about is the culture around switching cameras with new releases. And actually, to be honest, I don't think it's totally a bad thing. Now, I'm not someone that's gonna switch from the Komodo X to the Sony Burano anytime soon. However, if you are given new information in terms of new cameras that are available, well, then you're able to make that decision and change whenever you should so feel like it. It feels kind of like every time someone changes cameras, you almost owe it to the audience to give some sort of explanation. I'm not with that, I don't really care. However, I wanna to talk to somebody else who also recently got into the Komodo X who's probably watching the release the same time as I am. And you probably are also a little bit peeved that we switch cameras every now and again, but it's just a change of situation. So naturally when the Sony Burano was being announced, I started to weigh against my Komodo X. But honestly, they're both insanely capable cameras and the price points are both over 10K once you get them all rigged out. Out of the box, the Sony Burano's offering you more, but it's also double the price. So obviously, no matter what situation you put both cameras, they're both gonna get the job done. One just might be easier than the other. And then in the next situation, the other camera is gonna be even more easier than the previous camera. If any of that just made sense. Again, they both offer more than the other does in different capacities. Now, everything in the Brano package is going to give you more than what you need for solo operators on higher end productions. You'll shoot an AK with multiple frame rates. You can crop down if you need to. You have the raw codec that's in there. You're going to have a whole bunch of things, and it also works with other Sony systems that you've probably used before. Now, all of that, we're going to come down to the price and where I actually think this is segmented. Now, at the time of this video, the Sony Burano is about $25,000 US, which is far more money than I will ever spend on a camera. So if you guys are asking if I'm going to switch from the Komodo X, which I just got, into the Sony Burano, probably not. But am I going to rent the dog crap out of it? Absolutely. Now, this camera is in the market of people that were looking at something like the Red Raptor. I actually did a video comparing the first version of the Venice to the Red Raptor. And to be honest, in a lot of cases, the Red Raptor came away with it. Albeit the Sony Venice 1 is six years older than it. But one of the things that I mentioned is that if Sony actually made a camera in this price range, it would be a really fun thing to do to actually compare these two cameras together. And it looks like they either read my mind or they were already planning it because the Sony Burano is their version of the Red Raptor. And for people that are looking at buying cameras in that price range, that's probably who this camera is for. If you're somebody that's using a Sony a7S III and you're doing the jobs that require an a7S III or an FX3, you probably shouldn't be looking at this camera. Not every single camera release from some of these companies are made for you and to entice you to switch from something that's $3,000 or $4,000 into something that's 25 grand, which means also that judging the Burano by those parameters kind of isn't fair because you're just inserting your use case to something that might not even be for you. That being said, for myself and my use case, I think this is a camera that's gonna work really well with rental houses or people that are working on high-end production on a regular basis. It's small enough to be used by a solo operator and you can set it up to work with a crew. You are gonna get all the quality inside of the camera, but at the same time, at that price tag, most normal people aren't going to spend their hard-earned money on this. In fact, I think for some people, this actually is their yearly income. So that's not something that I'm gonna jump to at any point in time, at least anytime soon. Also, for some of you guys that might have more compact or more entry level or budget cameras that are in the Sony lineup, almost every single camera uses S-Log3 nowadays. In fact, I've actually matched up every single Sony camera to each other in a video that I could leave somewhere in the description that you could watch it. And I don't think the Sony Brano is going to be any different. If it's anything like the Sony Venice that I've used before and using the OCN LT, you're gonna be able to match this to a multitude of different cameras. So if you're someone that isn't going to buy the Brano, but maybe you have a buddy that is, don't necessarily be afraid that you're not gonna be able to match up in a production scenario. I actually kind of really like what Sony's doing nowadays. A lot of their cameras kind of function like cars. They all have four wheels and they're all going to drive, but based on your use case, you can get different models for different things. Uh, some people want to have a different upgrade that's going to be groundbreaking every time Sony makes a release. And not only do I don't think that's fair, I don't necessarily think it's realistic. But what I do think is happening is that they're expanding horizontally for the different use cases and the Sony Burano filling that gap of people that might have bought something like a Raptor from Red 
I think it's starting to fill that and I think it's making it a little bit more competitive. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and leave your comments about what you think about the Sony Burano. Are you guys going to get it? Are you probably going to scrap it? I know I'm probably going to rent it, but I just don't have the funds to buy it. That being said, if you want to watch more videos, probably left one over here. See you in the next one. Peace.